full choke. This weld on this bracket has pulled apart. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the Champion 10520 inverter generator. Now, I received this a few days ago, and I was setting it up and just showed you a few scenes where the inverter generator wasn't quite performing up to spec. And uh, I find that unfortunate. I wanted to point those things out right away because I think it's important when you spend a thousand dollars on a brand new generator that uh, everything is working and uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now, with that said, I want to say that this generator, when running correctly, provides really awesome clean power. And that's what I want to do here. I'm looking to upgrade my current generator from a modified sine wave to this new inverter generator to provide more clean power for the house and some of my more sensitive electronics, especially our LED lights and switches. Now, I do hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to just do a quick review, unboxing, and show you some of my experiences with this generator. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. Now before we get too far into the video, I just want to let you guys know I did buy this off Amazon. I'll leave a link below. And at the time of the video, I paid $1,005.90. That was before taxes. Interestingly enough, Amazon has raised the price of this generator now to $1,150.88. So I'm not sure what's going on here, if it's supply and demand or if it's tariffs. Now I did buy the generator towards the end of July, so perhaps the new prices are happening in August and so forth. The Champion 10520 inverter generator is a cost-effective 7,000 watt solution to powering our home during blackouts or whenever we need good clean power off-grid. This is not the only type of inverter generator that's 7,000 watts on the market. Now let's not kid ourselves that the king of the market for 7,000 watt inverter generators is the Honda EU7000IS. Many consider this generator to be in a class of its own, especially considering the motor and electronics, but it does come at a hefty price. With that said, there are several other types of inverter generators that come close to the Honda in its specs, especially with the 7,000 watts of RMS inverter power. Now some of these newer models have some built-in features like USB and so forth, but the reason I went with Champion is because this particular model has been around for the longest. Champion's also been in the business of power equipment since 2003. I've also read that Champion has really good customer service and support. I will say that customer service was really good when I had to deal with the broken seat for the handle. More on that to come. For now, let's get going on putting together this generator. Moving into the unboxing portion of the video, the Champion generator did come with a little bit of superficial box damage during transport, but there was no major damage to the generator inside the box. I always find it easier on large products such as generators to open up the box, cut it down on four sides, and then just pull the generator out. This usually works pretty well, especially when you're working by yourself. Surprisingly, and on a more positive note, the generator did come about a week early. The setup on this generator is pretty easy and straightforward. Be sure to remove all the shipping brackets that come with the generator. I did notice that one of the shipping brackets was pretty beat up, so this generator definitely got tossed around during shipping. Thus would explain why the box was all torn up. Installing the wheels is super easy and only takes a couple of minutes. There's a bracket that goes on underneath the generator. Again, this is really easy to do and it's well laid out in the instructions. The next item I'm installing is part 61, which is called the seat handle. This is the part that eventually broke and started pulling away from its welds. I did make a mistake installing the bar, which I caught later. You want to make sure this flat part on the bar is in the up position so it pushes against the assembly seat. Just a quick tip, it may be easier to pull out the whole battery and install the lead rather than trying to install the lead and work in this tight space underneath the generator. 
It is nice that Champion provides both the tube and funnel to add your oil. This weld on this bracket has pulled apart. And you can see both sides where the weld just gave loose. And once it gave loose, it allowed this whole piece here to bend up. So I did call Champion. The only way to contact them for customer service for help is to call, but it took a long time to get through. I think it was around an hour and 20 minutes to get the call answered. So I was on hold for an hour and 20 minutes, but the guy who answered was very nice. He apologized two or three times. Said he'd send the new part out right away. And it's also going to send me a, uh, a t-shirt. It was good customer service. So we'll uh, wait for that new part to come and uh, we should be good to go. In the meantime, we'll just sort of wheel out the generator with both of these handles on each side, just kind of walk it out. I also pulled the starter cord slowly just a couple of times to get that oil moving, make sure everything was lubricated properly. Give it a shot here. Choke out. Turn on. Generator ready to go outside. It's hooked into our receptacle, which connects to the interlock kit downstairs in the basement. I'm going to go ahead and start this up, let it warm up for five minutes or so, and then we'll test out the power and see how it runs the house. It sounded like it was running in eco mode and we had the flashing red light on to indicate some kind of error. So I'm going to investigate this a little bit and see what's going on. Let's try this again. I'm going to do half choke to start. Let's see where we're at. One more choke. Running good now. Downstairs now. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the main power because the generator's been running for a little bit. I'm ready to switch over the generator switch. Before I do that, I'm just gonna shut off every circuit here and in my sub panel so that uh, when I turn on the main generator switch, it doesn't get overloaded. So when I start shutting these down, the emergency lights, which I have up here, will turn on. It allows me to get down here when it's dark out and I can see and get to the panel. Let's go ahead and shut things off. Emergency lights just turned on. 
All right, so all the power's off. Let's switch over. Main power is off now, and I can engage the interlock. So now we're running off generator power. And I'll go ahead and turn on some circuits. So some things that will be running in an off-grid situation like uh, basement stairs and uh, garage, bathrooms. Uh, we don't need the furnace. Um, septic well pump, super critical circuit right there. Make sure you have water, turn the lights back on. Um, we'll do a, a bedrooms. Um, what else can we do here? Um, the only dishwasher kitchen, let's do that. We need the range, it's pretty high power, we'll keep that off. Let's do the refrigerator, um, the microwave, uh, downstairs bathroom, kitchen counter, living room, important, and then media center. I'll keep the sub panel off for now. All right, let's go upstairs and see how the power is running. Let's pause the video right now. I want to cut to some previous footage of the old generator, which is modified sine wave. This clip right here is of our Insteon lights and control panel. You can see how it flickers off the modified sine wave generator. Both the light switches and the lights themselves flicker. There's a huge difference in performance moving to the Champion generator, as you can see in the next clip. Back now at one of the Insteon switches and you can see it's running really well. It's not flickering, it's not going crazy as it was before on the old generator. Now with the new Champion inverter generator, everything looks clean. Let's go ahead and turn on the lights. All right, so the lights are rolling really smooth. No flickering at all. Everything's looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and run the wire until the pump comes on for the well and see how the generator runs and sounds. I can hear the generator outside, so I know when it ramps up. Okay, so the generator just ramped up. The water is running. No light flicker, so it's handling those surges nicely. No issues whatsoever. So here's the new part. And there's the old one. You can see where it opened up. Okay, up here, let's see how this works out. Okay, it seems to be uh, holding pretty well. No issues at all. So thank you Champion for replacing that. And getting me going again. So one of the issues I've noticed when starting this generator, which is kind of quirky, is sometimes it goes right to fault mode. It doesn't fully power up. And then when it's in fault mode, all the electrical outlets are disabled. I will say when you get a good start, what will happen is the engine will, will turn over once you put the choke in and you'll hear it. It's powered down, then it will fully power up and you'll get the okay light. When it doesn't happen, it just stays powered down. I'll show you what it sounds like. Full choke. That's exactly what I was talking about. Why does it go to error when it starts? Let's try it again. Now it's good. It powered up. So. so again, not sure what's going on with that, why you have these false starts, but it's something just, you know, it adds to the reliability question on the champion generators. Now one of the other quirky things about this generator, it tends to burn the grass when you have it on the lawn. The heat from the generator is forced down. The exhaust goes out, but the heat of the generator, the back of the generator goes down and it'll burn your grass. I've been working on putting some hours on the generator so I can do the first oil change. Let's go ahead and put some synthetic 5W30 in once we uh, hit at least five hours. Now the generator came with two hours on it, but uh, I'm not sure where that's at. So I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and put at least five hours on it. So it has seven or eight hours on it all together. Then I'll do the first oil change. All right guys, gonna finish up the video. 
at this point, I would be remiss if I didn't say I had some concerns about the Champion. It's reliability and the starting error I'm getting 30 or 40% of the time when I start this up. I think it's fair to say that this uh, generator at this point is not running like a champ, pun intended. With that said, I am looking forward to modifying this generator to propane. And my old Briggs and Stratton always ran like a champ when I'm running off propane. So with that in mind, with the future modification, I'm hopeful that this champion generator will run much better. I want to thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Come on back for more videos. Take care.